What exactly are white people superior at? Insecurity. Pretending. Fear. Being fearful of nothing. Being ignorant. Blame. Letting their egos control their every move. Privilege. Privilege. Killing victimized. Playing the victim. Congratulating themselves over sh that they're incompetent at <laughs> or that should have already been done. They're superior at being d What exactly are white people superior at? Making us believe that we don't matter. Believing that they're superior. Feeling superior. Thinking they're superior. Thinking that they're superior. Thinking that they are superior. Self-delusion. Controlling the narrative. Believing their own press. Marketing of white superiority. Whether you are Republican, whether you're Democrat, whether you're conservative, like white people are really good at upholding white supremacy. How about yes, exactly. I am the oppressor. I am racist. Oh my God, he just said he's racist. It shouldn't be this hard, you guys. If you live in America, went to school, participate in the socioeconomic structures, participate in any sort of system, education, business, entertainment, what have you, and you are white, you are indoctrinated, you are oppressive, and yes, you are racist. It is something that we have learned, either consciously or subconsciously, all of us as white Americans. And what we have to do is unlearn that. I'm trying to do the work. Part of doing the work is pushing against dangerous narratives that are counterintuitive to that unlearning, like white people are also oppressed by racism. We're not. We are the oppressors. That's the point. You should be doing the unlearning too. Do the work. Those lights that are that are just shooting out from the Lincoln Memorial uh, along the reflecting pool, it, I look. It's like almost uh, extensions of Joe Biden's arms embracing America. It was a moment where the new president came to town and sort of convened the country in this moment of remembrance, uh, outstretching his arms. What a story, though. What a great love story between. Jill Biden and Joe Biden. It's just a different kind of marriage. The, this is a, a love match like the Obamas were. So I think that'll be healing for the country too. Congratulations, Andrew, on your much deserved Founders Award. Governor Andrew Cuomo, you are the man. What? Your daily briefings live from New York gave us hope, gave us clarity, gave us the truth, and gave us something that we were not getting from Washington, leadership. In the midst of this storm, Andrew Cuomo became the nation's governor. People across the country tuned into his press conferences every day. Daily, I was watching his press conferences, informing us, telling us what to do. And uh, he also said that, uh, you know, now that you're the love gov, uh, you've kind of transcended politics and now you're just part of really more, you know, you're more of like a national sex symbol. He says you'll probably get more dates than votes. That's him saying that, not me. You did your thing during COVID. New York was suffering. We were the epicenter. We were all in a crisis, in a panic. And every single day you came on the airways and you offered your strength, your leadership and your direction and your caring and your heart. You are the epitome of New York tough. You He's set the example for the rest of the nation, the rest of the world how to be a leader during a time of crisis. Thank you for your leadership during these trying times. We are New York tough, smart, disciplined, united. We thought it might be a good time to take stock of where we are and the return of normal. Tonight marks the end of Joe Biden's first full week in office. Not one American citizen that we're aware of has awakened and said to themselves while reaching for their phone, Dear Lord, what has the president said or done now? Are we at war? Has Rudy stopped dripping? And there was this, a wife kissing her husband goodbye. In this case, First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, wishing the president a good flight. The anxiety that over the past four years had become America's leading export to the world. Anxiety is coming down. As reported by Deadline, a spokesperson for Lucasfilm confirmed on Wednesday evening that Carano wasn't just dropped from the first ever live action Star Wars series, she's also no longer going to be considered for or offered employment with Lucasfilm in the future. 
The decision came after Carano continued to share on social media statements that Lucasfilm deemed, quote, abhorrent. The star's penchant for expressing her political opinions online, no matter how divisive or offensive those opinions might be, caused many fans to urge Lucasfilm to fire her. As Deadline details, Carano's most recent controversial post on Instagram suggested that being a Republican in the U.S. in 2021 is similar to being Jewish in Nazi Germany. This sparked renewed outrage online, and hashtag fire Gina Carano started trending on Twitter as folks tagged both Disney and Lucasfilm in thousands of tweets in an effort to remove her from The Mandalorian. One of the reasons Twitter cancelled Pratt was because he skipped a Joe Biden campaign fundraiser that was attended by many of his Avengers co-stars. Pratt told People back in 2017 that he doesn't identify with either party, but he does publicly attend the Zoe Church in Los Angeles, which has links to the Hellsong Mega Church, which is another reason people on Twitter want to cancel him. Not because he's a practicing Christian, mind you, but because the church has an ultra-conservative reputation and was called, quote, infamously anti-LGBTQ by Ellen Page. Pratt not taking voting seriously and attending a reportedly anti-LGBTQ church are just some of the reasons some people on Twitter are over him. Sephora has cut ties with beauty influencer and YouTuber Amanda Ensing. A Christian and Donald Trump supporter, Sephora defended the decision saying Amanda, quote, shared content on social media that is not aligned with Sephora's values around inclusivity. We made the decision to cease all programming with Amanda. Liberals trying to hammer President Trump on immigration only to have this backfire in a big way. It turns out the article that they were tweeting, sort of a paper in Arizona, it showed pictures of immigrant children in cages. Well, this was actually from 2014 during President Obama's term, not President Trump's. They quickly deleted those tweets, their mistakes. Massive Hurricane Florence is set to slam into the Carolinas, potentially causing catastrophic damage, and somehow it's now President Trump's fault. The Washington Post out with an op-ed titled, Another Hurricane is About to Batter Our Coast. Trump is Complicit. According to the Post, because President Trump doesn't bend over backwards to support climate change, he's now to blame. And I go to... Today, lawmakers pointed to this photo on Capitol Hill, saying this is the effect of a lack of policy on immigration that fathered his young daughter just shy of two. The Democrats and say it's the president's fault. The president's actions at the border are a whirlwind of incompetence leading to pictures like this. The issue front and center in the race. Gabriel Sherman at Vanity Fair described Trump's America as a vicious and divided place, where a man in his 60s walked into Sherman's 15-month-old daughter, knocking her to the ground with a bloody nose. Now that... Some Asian American groups say that race-based affirmative action policies actually hurt their chances of attending top colleges. Since affirmative action policies were enacted, minorities and women have seen increases in university enrollment. The Supreme Court has ruled that the use of race in college admissions is constitutional, as long as explicit quotas aren't used. But some Asian American groups say quotas do exist. I think I had a 4.6 GPA, something around a 4.7 had a perfect ACT score. Michael Wang applied to college in 2013. He was an outstanding student and even sang at President Obama's inauguration. However, he was rejected by every Ivy League school except UPenn. 
He filed a complaint with the Department of Education alleging that Yale, Stanford, and Princeton discriminated against him because he was Asian American. I definitely felt like really disappointed, a little bit angry at that point as well. You're not sure why you got in or why you didn't get in. And I think that's what made it really hopeless for me because if I had to go through this all again, what could I do to maybe improve my chances? I don't have the answer to that. A 2009 Princeton study found that in order to get into America's top universities, Asian American students' SAT scores had to be 140 points higher than white students, 270 points higher than Hispanic students, and 450 points higher than black students.